Today is Wednesday, November 20th, 2019. Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And this is our recap of Island of the Idols, Week 9. This episode was titled, Two for the Price of One. And we already knew who said that, because it was in Next Time on Survivor. That's right. That was Aaron. Aaron. All right, we're back at camp at Lumuwaku. It's night 24, and Janet tells us that tribal council was hard. She felt alone. And she said she couldn't quit because she would never want her daughter or granddaughters to see her quit Mm -hmm. didn't want didn't want the family to have to see that said she said that she didn't know what to do from here though nora had some advice for her didn't she what'd she say she said the game is always changing janet take it day by day yep hang in there good on nora and the game rolls on so had all that that went down at that tribal council and they get back we get this little moment with janet a little bit of encouragement from nora and then that's kind of bam it. put it to bed yeah that works for me so next up charisma has a rat run across her face <laughs> Jeez, that would be disturbing wouldn't it yeah oh goodness mm. yeah. i'm sorry i i mm. she said it ran terrified ran across her mouth or like put a foot in her mouth. <laughs> I, I, I was trying not to think too much about it. But, yeah, it looked like they but, they had a a night back at camp to mirror all the the uh, happenings in tribal council. It was a rough one for sure. They said it was one of the worst nights. Yeah, she woke Lauren up. It looked like uh, the girls were sleeping down on the beach since Missy's face was covered in sand. Mm-hmm. And Elizabeth was so frozen. Couldn't tell who was in there in the shelter that had been sleeping with Dan before, but it looked like there was four or five of them in there. I didn't even see Dan. And you, uh, no, I, I said you couldn't tell who was in there. Oh, okay. But that was the, they showed the little shelter where we had seen Janet and Dan having their talk before, and there was four or five bodies stacked up in there. So was it telling that Elizabeth said she had no one to keep her warm but Missy? Did they isolate themselves after that tribal, or... We just said we couldn't tell, so I don't have an answer for you. I know, (laughs) but I'm just putting it out there to reflect upon... Gotcha. All right. By what she said... Getting philosophical on us. She had no one to keep her warm, Mm -hmm. but Missy, on that terrible, the worst rain ever. I'm pretty sure, looking back on it with the hindsight of 2020, that that was a bit of foreshadowing. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep, so they got a rainbow the next morning. They're waking up, like you said, and Elizabeth's having a hard time because she was freezing and she was being comforted, like like you mentioned there. And Nora tells us that Karishma is lucky to be here. She does nothing in camp. But complain. Yeah, and she expects people to take care of her, and she really needs to show us that she wants to be here. So she gives her a task. Go collect coconuts along the path. Pretty low bar. And I would have loved to have seen her face tonight, realizing that she did that. <laughs> that I'm I am absolutely convinced that Nora <laughs> is a force of chaos. Mm-hmm. You just don't know what's going to come spinning out of that that uh, Tasmanian devil called Nora. Well, this also makes me. Um, more certain that I don't believe Charisma was a fan of the show because who, what fan goes out there and does absolutely nothing? Doesn't help do anything. Well, she's giving a little story. I guess she's she's explaining a little bit of that here, and she mm-hmm. says she's only got herself to blame. She thought she was going to come out there and kill it, 
And but she knew that she had gotten herself in this hole that she was in. I did. I did like that she said that she was finding value in her husband because she was realizing where she had zero aptitude for this game. Couldn't get anyone to trust her even for one vote. Yeah, she's struggling. No, nobody. She did have a husband back at home who had he signed up to be. forever. <laughs> signed up to be with her. Okay, where I wasn't sure you were going back to that husband, but it sounds like she can appreciate him better now. Yeah, after <laughs> yeah, realizing how little she has to offer the game. She tells us, this is the, in terms of self-awareness, this is big. She says, I'm not even a good goat. I am a goat in this season, but I'm not even a good one because I'm not predictable. Wow. Okay, well. And then mm-hmm. out of nowhere, and we, you had to suspect something might happen since they took the time to go on the trail Yep. With her, she ends up finding a hidden immunity idol. What do you make of that? <laughs> this episode is so stoked with <sighs> irony. I know. That it, it's just overflowing. I, I actually loved it just because... Um, the thought of seeing Nora's face when she realized <laughs> what she had done. What she had done. She sent her by to, sending her out there to get coconut and telling her where to go to right. get them. In in the made this moment possible. <laughs> the idol. Yeah. Oh, uh, it was it was it was funny. So luckily, I didn't have charisma going home. I had her safe, so I was like, okay, that works for me this week. So amazingly, she threw. The least amount of effort, mm-hmm. the one time she actually applies herself, at least that we've seen, to, to do something around camp, she ends up finding a hidden immunity well, idol. Well, not only that, then she wanders back into camp, not even realizing how long she's been gone. And Nora's like, you have two coconuts? You've been gone an hour. And you have two. Right. And, and she actually it's walks like, up oh. on Tommy and Nora and Lauren there at the well getting water and they had just been talking about <laughs> it's going to be off. it's going to be Karishma and then Janet and then yeah. they realize wait a minute she's been gone a long time Karishma decides to play sick so she puts on an act oh i feel Some bad i game, still feel bad game aptitude there and then Nora says hey we're going to call a doctor for you you're not doing well and you you have no sense of time Okay. She did push that pretty hard, but and I didn't think charisma covered very well. Oh no, no, I feel I feel better now. Well, she realizes that she her little drama all of a sudden almost made it better. worse and ended up yeah taking. She needed time to go think about how to make the most of that hidden immunity idol. Yeah, it made it look. And now she's facing a visit from medical. Yeah. Because she played up that lie so well. And they can't believe that it would be anything but sickness. <laughs> why, why wouldn't she Given, just let... She could have let medical come. Well, right she didn't there. want to lose that time. She didn't want to have to spend time talking to him when she needed to be thinking strategically, I guess. Okay. And she knows what a challenge that has been for her. And speaking of challenges, skip to day 27. It's time for the immunity challenge. This is one that we've seen before. Aaron and Missy give back the necklaces they won at the previous Mm -hmm. challenge. So they're going to have to stand on a narrow beam, and it gets more narrow. That's how I want to say that, since I had trouble pronouncing narrower. (laughs) It gets more and more narrow as the challenge progresses. While they're standing on the narrow beam, they have to keep a a ball, like a cue ball, rotating inside of a, a round track. But the real twist is uh, they're going to break into two. I really like this. I like two teams. Yeah, two groups. To do this. Going to end up with two winners, which explains, like you were pointing out, he left the two immunity necklaces up there. Yep. That's because we're going to end up with two winners again here. And then he really. that out on the podcast, but you and I had talked about it. Yeah, 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 you did. And we talked about it in the previous uh, next time on Survivor there. So. So. And they're going to end up with two people going home. Right. So each group's going to lose someone. The Orange Tribe was Missy, Elizabeth, Karishma, Tommy, and Elaine. Yep. And on the purple team, Dean, Dan, Lauren, Aaron, Janet, and Nora. Yeah. And who wins immunity? 
Well, I, the other thing is it's playing out is that we learn that the last person standing is going to win a reward for their group. Yes. So that's that's a nice twist that he throws in on them. And they get to go to tribal council last, knowing who the first group had voted out. Which Nora completely forgot about, it seems <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, uh, you guys are jumping on her case for not staying in the game to win you guys food when you guys had already gone out. So, mm, No, mm. I think it's perfectly okay to bust Nora's chops a well, little bit. still. So, yeah, Elizabeth ends up going out first, then Tommy, then Aaron, and then a door's open with Aaron without yeah. immunity for Aaron sure. Aaron went out fourth. I was like, whoa. Then Dan, Lauren, Janet, Dean. Goodness. Yeah, so you end up with Missy facing off against Elaine and Dean facing off against Nora. And like you said, uh, when Dean dropped his ball, then Nora had won. She has no presence of mind. She might not have been listening. I don't know <laughs> what it was. But she celebrates her win, jumps off, not <laughs> really realizing that if she had kept going, she could have won them sandwiches and the opportunity yeah. to go second to tribal council goodness missy had a couple of incredible recovers as she's facing she off against yeah. elaine there i didn't think it i didn't think it was possible to recover from how it had looked like it was coming mm-hmm. out of the track but mm-hmm. she did bring it back and then she lost it elaine actually won <laughs> an individual immunity the and bust, she didn't seem to be the, struggling that much the busted can of biscuits had one of the smoothest approaches to the whole thing <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Good on Elaine. So, Elaine and Nora are the big winners. Individual immunity. Mm. Good job. Yeah, I'm I'm actually just a little stunned at both of them <laughs> winning. <laughs> I didn't expect either one of them. Maybe Nora, I had Nora's initially come close. I had initially thought that due to her physicality, she had a shot at some of the endurance things, but she really proved that wrong before. So, All right, so Nora grabbed a hug when she got her necklace, and Elaine went in for her hug and actually kissed him on the cheek (laughs) when she got hers. I liked her explanation. (laughs) Thanks for throwing in a redneck game here. I was there's no way I was going to beat all the beast mode competitors, but you then you threw this in, spin the ball around a hoop, (laughs) and I had that one in the bag. All right, and then we find out that the uh, the first group of losers end up having to go to the old Lyro camp before being able to go to tribal council. So they're not going to get to discuss things as a group. They're going to have to, uh, as a one big merge tribe, they're going to have to stay as separate groups. Yep. I'm sure that was their reasoning for doing that. Um, also, were you surprised, I know I was, that Aaron um, had had a problem with going back there because of his old memories no i wasn't I, surprised at all because he and missy were so vehement about the orange curse and that was all about losing and you know aaron's right <laughs> there was reason <laughs> I, I still didn't think he had that bad of memories there but i guess i was wrong oh yeah they were very very uh adamant about not wanting any part of that and that they were so happy when that was done they're all about the w's so he ends up back there at that camp that's when he makes his statement that uh, with janet on one tribe and charisma on the other they could get a two for one yep Uh uh-huh nora's having a discussion with him and she seems to be in line and then cut to her talking to Dan and Janet and Dean, and she says, look, we got a clear shot at him. <laughs> so it, it looked like she was the shot caller, that she was the one She's that... She's done that before, that, targeted people. Yeah, well, she certainly targeted Molly, didn't Every she? Guy, there's an yeah. opportunity. Nora has done that. Yeah, so, so she, she zeroed in and made the case for taking him out. I, I think people would really be cheering for her a lot more if she hadn't been so, you know, annoying with... with uh, just her talking and isolating herself, aligning with Jason and people that were kind of on the outs in the beginning. I think she hurt herself more in the beginning of the game. Actually, she just, by her very nature, she does. Because she's unpredictable, you can't count on her for anything. True. And that came through loud and clear in the Kelly and the Jamal interviews this week. So it's 
I would never want to keep someone like Nora in the game just because you never know what they're going to do. you got to have some confidence. You never can be 100% sure, but with her, it, you just don't know which way she's going to go spinning off in her dervish mode and what the result's going to be. Well, Dean wasn't happy about it because he doesn't want to lose Aaron. Yeah, he's still working the whole meat shield theory. He thinks if Aaron's yeah. there, then he's covered and... Yeah, even, he's protected. Even makes that pitch to Dan. Hey, we don't want to lose him because they'll come for us next as physical threats. Well, and Dan just says basically, you know, it's complicated and he needs to figure out what's best for him. So I, I skipped over it there, but we did get to see a moment on the beach in between those two uh, discussions where Janet was talking with Dan and she opens with well it's unbelievable that this is where we are and it looks like they're she's looking for some closure and he tells her hey we're we're 90 percent back and then in the confessional he says yeah she's someone I want to work with again what did you think about all that uh I wasn't really surprised because she felt very sorry and like she had turned on him and so I think he's reaching out and realizing that hey she's a number Mm -hmm. And if somebody's feeling badly about how they treated you, it's okay to work with them. Because she's, you can tell she's a, a basically an honest person. Mm -hmm. And that she really, she personally didn't have anything against him. So I think that uh, it was a smart move on Dan's part to reach out to her. And that they can kind of have each other's back, which is where they were before everything went down. Mm -hmm. So, good for them. And I would like to see Janet stay in the game. So, for that reason alone, I was happy about it. Okay, we bounce over to Vokai and see them enjoying their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. It's peanut butter jelly time. Missy tells us, well, Karishma needs to go, but she's happy to have this opportunity to have free reign, and she wants to get her girls together, and she wants to separate Tommy from Lauren, and they need to pull Karishma to do that when she's talking to Elizabeth. Yep, Missy needs to win, she says, and uh, everyone yeah, she was loves talking, Tommy. She was talking about herself in the third person, wasn't she? I know. Yep. Okay, so... Which we always love. Well, it's usually a good indication on Survivor that you got someone who's who's not doing well. <laughs> well, she... And when she they does, start referring to themselves in the third person, I it's know, like, I, whew, mm -hmm, this okay. begets a fall. Okay, but getting past that, um, I, she's right. People seem to like Tommy, and he would be a lot more likely to... Uh, be given the money than charisma would yeah and we've we've heard missy make this play before is that she really if she can pull tommy away get get tommy away dispose of him so that lauren doesn't have tommy in one of her numbers then lauren will be dependent on her and missy much more and then they'll have another number that they can work with and this is we've seen this be a very effective strategy in the past on survivor yeah you eliminate someone else's uh, partner in crime and then that opens them up to be in your alliance more so missy goes to inform karishma how the vote should go mm -hmm. and on one hand karishma's happy because they're talking about somebody other than her yeah but she doesn't like how she's being talked at not only was she being talked at, but Missy reached out and tried to pull her, physically pull her back Physic three times. Three times. When Karishma was trying to, to walk away. So I, that stood out to me because of everything that just Karishma's happened. Karishma's reaction. Well, as that well. too. Yeah, yeah. Personal space. Right. That you put hands on. Obviously, she wasn't okay with you, it. And you did it three times in a row. <laughs> pulled her back. Pulled her back. Yeah. It's like, you wouldn't like that if she'd done that to you. So, anyway, that was... Uh, I think Karishma was correct in just walking away. Oh, yeah. And going... Yeah, that was a good Rather than good go response. off on her. Or to escalate. Yeah, yes. I think that was really... The, that, that the right was, choice that was that mature of her to do that so and it, you could tell it was really bugging charisma we see her talking to elaine and <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> although i will say age doesn't 
as far as I'm concerned, because I've heard people make this argument before, I've got 50 years of experience. We've got 100 combined years of experience doing this. That, yeah, age doesn't mean anything. Time doesn't mean anything. Ideally, it should, and you should have learned, but I, you know. Well, hers was more, how dare this young 24-year-old got, girl. She told Elaine, I got 13 years on Yeah, speak on to Missy. me in this manner. <laughs> she was using her name, too, because yeah. that can be used as a pejorative. I will talk to you when I want to. Yeah. So, you know, okay, so she went a little arrogant there as well. But, okay, she does get to choose that. You can't force her to stay back and talk to you, Missy. The really interesting thing to observe is how Elaine took all this and how she responded to Karishma. So she understood that there's a lack of compassion and understanding when Missy talks to Karishma. It's usually just frustration and directives and orders. Well, the lucky thing for Elaine is that Karishma gave her a heads up about what Missy and Elizabeth plan to do. In terms of the vote for Tommy. Obviously, yeah. they knew she felt close to Tommy, and they weren't going to tell her. So that speaks volumes to me as well. And I think Elaine reached out and touched her too, but she it was did. in a comforting way, mm -hmm. which you could make the argument it was still... She was making <laughs> really good eye contact. Yes. They were... It, and like when Missy was talking to Karishma, Karishma was turned away to the side. They were facing each other, and you could see a softness in Elaine's response that's just not yes. there. And I a heard, receptiveness by Karishma. Yeah. That's the difference. She was receptive. You, you almost never see a softness in Missy because she's so game on. Yeah. It's all um, competitive well, and, that could be and part aggressive. Part of the military training stuff as well. I don't know. And the know. athlete. Yeah. Yeah. So that's her personally, but Charisma went right for the, she's bullying me. Yeah, and I, she's been quick to, to say that before, and we heard from Tom when he got voted off in his interviews, and he said, I didn't see that, because she had made that statement before. But in a little bit, um, we get to hear Tommy say that Missy had done that, although I think you were quick to point out Tommy's Look at the anger in his eyes. <laughs> yeah, Tommy's reacting. Because she's coming after him. Yeah, so you could you could view that as Karishma being vindicated a little bit by Tommy there. Yeah. After well, Elaine goes to Tommy and tells him, "Hey, Big Red, I'm not voting for that you." That was cute. <laughs> well, just to see the disparity between the two of them, with her looking almost straight up to talk to him when they're standing near each other. Yeah, and so that spun Tommy up. He didn't seem to have any trouble accepting what she was saying is the truth at yeah. all. Well, and he said Missy never wanted to work with Karishma before at all. Mm -hmm. And um, But the one thing I really, really liked, and for me it was a pleasure to watch, is how Elaine just processed within her mind and took everything in stride and just worked the whole situation. Mm -hmm. Both in talking with Charisma and comforting her and getting on her side. I think you side. have an ulterior motive and that we often hear on the Survivor Fans podcast. I think your your assessment for may my be, new USB. Yes, it may be a little biased. And yours. <laughs> we we admittedly did celebrate when we saw her effectively working with Charisma. Well, I would have said it anyway. Oh, I okay. actually kind of forgot that. Mm, I'm, I'm struggling to believe you. Yeah, well, you're you're hardcore, <laughs> so I can believe that. But okay. it's true nonetheless. Uh huh. All right. So we see Missy attempt to make an apology to Karishma once they finally, once Karishma feels a sufficient amount of time has passed. And that she also has an alternative plan in her back pocket. And that Elizabeth tagged along. I, I so don't know if that get double was teamed, yeah. either double teamed or maybe to put Karishma a little more at ease and to try to keep things from escalating to the point it I did understand before. why you would say that. It's just given the history of Missy and Elizabeth together, it wouldn't comfort me at all to have Elizabeth there. Besides, she her expressions never convey anything to me of substance in that kind of a context so yeah well they're I always actually, so overblown i actually see charisma as being perfectly capable of holding her own you know and not not allowing bullying 
Yes, it does so, seem to be there. I mean, she yeah. seems very strong within herself. Yeah. In that respect. So, you know. Well, and you get to see the game bot version of Missy really hardcore there. So she apologizes then in confessional. She says, yeah, I'll hug you and blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry. So... You, I'll you, say whatever you need to hear and do whatever you need me to do. My thought when I saw that was blah, Karishma blah, blah. must feel really vindicated. Yeah, watching it at home. <laughs> yeah. 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 Going, I knew it. Well, I was on our second watching that yes, I thought that, right. not the first one. But I thought, well, this is going to be interesting to get her reaction there. Well, and I wasn't really sh- totally sure which way Karishma was going to go when she said, Tonight's decision has to be logical and not emotional. Mm-hmm. Missy may be playing me, but... And I thought, well, I don't really know what she, she means, which way she's yeah. going to go. And she did have the power, and she had the power to save herself. So she well, was in, in in survivor terms. She was in a unique yeah. position, and she was indeed, appeared to be and, a swing vote. And was enjoying her power. Yep. Her moment in power. Yeah. Okay. Bounce back over to the old Lyro camp one more time before they head out. Aaron tells us Janet is going home. They were having a conversation down on the beach, and she did an excellent job of convincing him that she was resigned to being voted out. Yep, she did very good with that. And he said, tells us he's always had the necklace. This is the first time he's gone to tribal without it. And he'll get to make sure that his alliance is really with him. Mm-hmm. Yes, quite the test. And Janet tells us, I sure hope I'm not fooling myself. Yeah, she said she, she was knows feeling that's safe. that's possible, too. Yep. <laughs> I liked Lauren's line there when she was talking with Dean. She said, yeah, we should all get an Oscar for the acting, for acting that yeah. we're doing. Okay, off to the unique tribal council here on night 27. Rob comments on Dean showing off his muscles and rolling up his shirt so we can see him. Yeah, I don't know what that was about, that but okay. Are, I don't know if Rob was jealous of Dean's muscles mm-hmm. or... It's like, look at him posturing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Rob also tells Sandra that, oh, Aaron's out during tribal council where he said, Aaron's out. And Sandra said, no, it's it's Janet. It's going to mm-hmm. be Janet. <laughs> Dan ends up getting the first question at that tribal council, and he tells Propes, yeah, there was a scramble once we got back from the challenge, but fortunately we got a plan. And pretty much sticking to that, and Janet gives confirmation, draws Propes' attention to say, yep, that was about me. Yeah, she played it well. Mm-hmm. Which was, um, I'm slipping back for just a minute, but I just remembered that Missy had warned Karishma they would be saying things about her again again during tribal to and i like that charisma said and who is your audience who are you playing this tommy for and, Elaine and she said tommy response. and she was like okay ben okay but what made you want to go back to that right now just because we didn't talk about it and okay. i thought it was an important move gotcha. that yeah that they had discussed it to that degree they had used this before, tactic yeah before same one Mm-hmm. Both both tribes were going to use that tactic, and I would assume they do it most tribals. Yep. But the, we don't always see them point it out that they're going to do it and warn the person, don't get upset, we're going to say this and this and this, but, but we don't mean it. And she's like, okay, I can handle it. So Dean gets a little blurb there talking about how it's concerning for him, but then it's Aaron's turn to talk about how first time there without the necklace and opportunity opportunity for them to vote vote him out or opportunity to demonstrate their <laughs> alliance with him yep. and he he says contrary to how it may appear externally he is not calm i i think he was shocked though i don't think he expected it to go that way nora says stuff happens for sure and we lost jack because of dean <laughs> so she throws some shade on dean there a little bit good old chaotic nora which means she still doesn't know that Kelly, they still don't know Kelly gave him that idol. But he might be able to diffuse some of it off of him that he, I wasn't hiding it. Kelly gave it to me. You think? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that's going to end up being significant in the scheme of things. But okay. we'll see. Janet said that she tried to make her case with everyone. And Nora responds back, well, I talk to her all the time, but there needs to be boundaries. So Nora was doing her job, too, of acting and 
making it think making them think that it was janet's time to go dan got the last comment there he said yeah there's absolutely fear here but there's a plan and he's trusting in the plan and we did <laughs> they went up and did the voting and then they went to a commercial we didn't get to see right away. Yeah, that was annoying right. huh it was a long one too wasn't it yeah, yeah. I thought, what are they playing all the commercials for the rest of the so show we so, so we don't have to be But it didn't interrupted work that again? way either. <laughs> okay, so we come back from commercial, and we get a vote for Janet, and then a vote for Aaron, and another vote for Aaron, and another vote for Aaron, and Aaron has been voted out. He, <laughs> I like how Propes let him take a few steps, like he was going to go out Ouch. the normal way, and he said, no, you can just go sit over there in the jury. <laughs> To drag that pain and public humiliation out a little longer. You just go immediately take a seat. And then Dean, uh, Dan, Nora, and Janet were sent back to camp, so they didn't get to see what happened. Not before we got some big smiles from Janet, though. <laughs> and a quick little after vote out confessional from Aaron. He said that he anticipated this. Right. Sure. Okay. Certainly it was a possibility. I guess you could say that about everyone there. Okay, and they bring in tribal council number two. Mm -hmm. Now, did we know if they're all going back to the same camp? Are they? Yeah. Jeff said that or something. Did I miss something? He didn't say otherwise. So. Okay. Okay. I just well, I assumed they would, but we get shock from Elizabeth and Missy, and uh, Elizabeth oh, yeah, ends up with shock. the first question, and she tells us, "Well, Aaron was one of my number ones." Oh I'm, well, that. Not sure if that's how that works, Elizabeth, but uh, that's yeah. also very telling of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I, I don't. I didn't understand why she, she felt, felt the, the need, need to, say, to point that out. You catch her everyone. off guard, and you don't know what's going to come out of Elizabeth's that's mouth. True. I think that's, that's pretty much how case. things are going to work. Yeah. Yep, you're right about that. And Missy declares that is not how the jury should be looking. So she wasn't in favor of that at all. Uh, okay. Well, wise of you to point that out to you. <laughs> Jeez. Elizabeth says there was definitely some chaos back at camp. But she's well, trying to make it good uh, that they got things I squared felt like away. Jeff was giving Missy a little uh, flack there with the, oh, Missy had it all mapped out how it was going to look. Yeah. Don't you think he was calling around a little bit for saying that in tribal? Mm, no? I don't know. You speak up. You're, you're drawing the attention and the focus on yourself so i yeah i don't i don't know that it necessarily that's necessarily the case well it didn't take missy long to go into the whole well charisma and i had quite a trip today and not a good one yeah charisma agrees that they have indeed butted heads a lot and missy said well there must have been more discussion because they were you know this would have just come out of the blue otherwise that missy said but Karishma called me a bully. We we voted out Kelly and Jamal and gave reasons their strategic threat, their physical threat. And she just says, I'm a bully. She called me names. And I am not that, she declares. She labeled me a bully, aggressive. But I know who I am and I accept myself. Do you, Karishma? I th you think Missy thought they they're just doing this little banter back and forth before they? I think so. I mean, it was a, a planned. Yeah, that's what planned they planned. Act. Yeah, but Karishma, and I think that's why they were able to keep cool because that could have been yeah. a heated discussion. Yeah, and it wasn't. Right. There wasn't a lot of fire Karishma behind was, it. Was ready and she responded really well. She said, "Yeah, at time she did see her as a bully." Tommy <laughs> chimes in. He said, "Yeah, Karishma." And Karishma and Missy are so different that they're never going to agree. They just have different views. Elizabeth's trying to be peacemaker. She says, I think we bridged that gap today, though. And then Missy said, well, Karishma, you lie, but we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Missy. Jeez. And Elaine plays that. She she tries to play dumb a lot of times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's her shtick. That's a classic Southern tactic, yeah. too. Well, you got me so twisted up. I, I, I just, we just going to have to vote someone out. One of the two of them is yeah. actually what she's saying. Yeah. Okay, Missy wanted to make a point before they went to vote, so she calls Jeff out on not 
recognizing the significance that two minorities had ended up wearing the immunity necklace the last time. And she wants to know why he said nothing. And so he says, thanks for speaking up and pointing that out. You got to know that answers like this can be fraught with peril. There can be no-win situations depending on how the party <laughs> or parties in question judge the response. But he says that he didn't actually even think of it that way I, I didn't either actually it was just two people one immunity that's the way it was but i didn't think of it in that light i can see how she would mm-hmm. but that, that didn't cross my mind either I, I don't think there was anything um any slight toward her or jamal about it and she got to shine the light on it the way that she wanted and get that out there and they included it in the edit so which is good good on her since she was leaving didn't know she was leaving but that was her opportunity to do it so so we get the votes start coming back we get a vote for missy and now she perks up a little and then a vote for tommy and another vote for missy and now elizabeth is recognizing something's up and then we get because uh, they were thinking it was going to be unanimous for Tommy, right? That they had pulled the, pulled the ladies together there. And then we get a third vote for Missy, and Missy is out. And she immediately wants to know, who did that? Tommy tells her, well, you came for me, so you had to go. And then, I don't know why she did this, but she just tells a, just a bold-faced lie. I didn't come at you? Really? Well, where did the votes Sorry, for what? me come from? <laughs> I usually think I can't figure that out. Oh, that was funny. Hello, numbers don't lie. Elaine wants credit. She goes in for the hug and says, yeah, I took you down. (laughs) I did it. (laughs) Yeah. Over me. Which is significant. We're going to come back to that. And even Karishma goes in for a hug. Yeah, that surprised me a little bit. But uh, Missy saying to Karishma, girl, I was keeping you to the end. Which is a dig. That's a straight up dig. Yeah, that. I was like, "Mm." good on you. Give her a good hug, then, Karishma. What I I, guess plans change. Yeah. Then she hugs um, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, and that's that's really what bothered me is right here when she whispered to Elizabeth that you got to kill Elaine slowly and methodically. Uh Uh-huh. I was like, ooh. So she was most hurt, most betrayed by Elaine is what she's telling us. Yep, that stung. you get her for me. Right. (laughs) It's like, okay. How how exactly? You be a good little soldier and you do what you're told. How exactly is she going to do that? Yeah. What makes you think she's in a position to do that at this point? She was the one on the outs. And surely you don't expect her to mess up her game going forward to try to get some revenge for you for right. like, uh, on a lane. I think in the moment she did want that. Well, yeah, I think so too. <laughs> she was but feeling pretty out of that's sorts. That's not reasonable. Yeah. I know, but just the whole thing of putting a smile on and then uttering something like that mm-hmm. to me was like, ooh. I want you to kill Elaine. Very Godfather like. And methodically. Yes. Mm-hmm. While she's smiling and going, oh, I ain't girl. Everything's yeah. good. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's a little bit scary. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyway, I certainly know that um, you might want to uh, go after everyone in the moment of being voted out. Sure. That's, that's more normal than not. So the game continues rolling on. Anything you want to say about this episode? Uh, Just, nope. Next on. Okay, next time on Survivor, Propes is making stuff up. For uh, what reason, I don't know. But when we see a chicken peck at Sandra, he tells us when animals attack, you have to travel in packs. And I don't know. I guess they think they're being creative with this part. Yeah, that sounds... That was really weak. I don't know. And then Dean They just wanted to use that scene. The goat army is assembling. Yeah, it's not clear if he's thinking mm. about himself as a goat. And then they cut and, to a confessional where he says, attention, goat number one, reporting for duty. I think he was talking about somebody else. You don't think he's talking about himself? I don't, but... He's not going to recognize... like, well... He is part of the goat army. Goat. Yeah, you're, you're definitely a goat. I don't think he sees that, though. He thinks he's still an active participant in the whole scheme of things. 
Well, and things change. You never know. That's right. He may be. We don't again, know. He could be part of that magic final three with Nora and Charisma. Or he he may think he's in tight with Tommy and Dan still and that he is, you know, that top That's chef. the goat army? That maybe he's thinking about the goat army in a completely and different way? the others are goat army, you know, the goat. Mm-hmm. But they're the, they're the top ones. I don't know. We'll find out next week, hopefully. And when he... When he says that the number one goat number one reporting for duty, it actually does cut to a shot of Nora. Yeah, and then it shows uh, Tommy and Lauren, and Lauren is seems to be excited about something that is going to change her game. Yeah, Probst is giving that commentary to reach the top of the food chain, and Tommy says, "Yeah, let's go." And yeah, that's when she says, "This could change it all in a confessional." Who knows what that means? Well, they're still together, and they're still a force in the game. Well, I'm curious about if if the girls somehow have convinced her to come with them. Who would the girls be in this context? Elaine, Elizabeth, Janet, Because Elaine and Elizabeth aren't on the same side right now. <laughs> well, they met, you, we don't know once they go back as one tribe. Yes, they were not together with this vote for sure. Mm-hmm. And Elizabeth could hold that against her. I don't see how that would help her. Mm-hmm. It'd be good to play along, regardless it's a big, of how you feel. Big test for Elizabeth because she's headed back to the bottom again. Yep. Yeah, but or well, she's been there before. She, uh, is that true? Has she actually been on the bottom? Yes, I, when in, they in the sense that there was a uh, old Vokai majority. I guess in that sense, she was on the bottom. But she was, yeah, was in the four, majority four. alliance at Lyro, and then, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, she's headed to an interesting place, but that potentially makes her a free agent, too, for some other ad hoc alliance that might assemble. Though, I don't understand why uh, it appears that Lauren and Tommy have been very close for a long time, but maybe she was always planning to cut him loose at some point. When he became more of a threat in the game. Lauren was, you're saying? That's what I'm saying is Lauren. Okay. It just wasn't clear which. Yeah. Which, what you meant, sorry, to me. Um, I, I'm not sure why she would go that route this early. The interesting thing to me is where, where does it, is Karishma ascending? Is she found a way out of that hole? She's got a hidden immunity mm-hmm. idol. She didn't use it. Nerves of steel. She didn't end up using it in that situation. She really just totally flipped the script on Missy. So this was a this was a significant. I never thought I was going to say this. This is a significant move for Karishma. <laughs> yeah, no, she took a step away from the goat. I'm kind of with today. Nora though. Nobody's going to give her the money. I don't think anybody, as much as they've all waited on her for this entire Okay, let me season. give you a final three, and you tell me who they're going to give the money to. Okay. Karishma, Dan, and Nora. Nora. No. Yeah, I would give it to Nora. I didn't say you. I said, all I'm not I got asking is you me, baby. You. No, you're, you're being asked to who do you think that remaining jury and would award the money to? I still think it would be Nora. Okay. As long as you're looking at it from the perspective of the jury. Well, it can't I, think be just Janet from yours. Would, I think Janet would give it to Dan. Uh, I don't know if any of the others would or not. But I do think Janet would, maybe. Not with every, the way everything's going to come out. I, I really I think don't. Karishma would have a chance against Nora in that situation. There's too many of those people are still in the game for me to judge if they were on the jury how they got there and who they might be most angry at. So I think it's too soon for me to make that call. Okay. I, I just realized from my perspective, I think Christmas actually, there is a scenario where she has a shot depending on what she makes of this hidden immunity idol. And she just was part of taking Missy down. I so that's, that's yeah. a resume now. There's some other people who don't it have is, a resume like and that. And she did find an idol. That's helpful. I still, at this point in time, don't think she has a shot at all. That's fair. (laughs) 
She's been in a deep, just deep hole, just like she admitted herself. I think things have changed after this. It's surprised. I'm just stunned. What can you tell us from a GSFL perspective? I know things are complicated because it's another double vote out. And That's I'll have true. to wait. But the scoring will not be done until tomorrow on Thursday because of the double eviction again. But I did go in and pull out the information about the USB count for each castaway left in the game. Tommy is still in the lead. Mm -hmm. He was in the lead in the beginning with 60. He now has 66 people Okay, having him as USB. Elizabeth had 23. Now she's got 25. Missy was had 23 and she had 34. Until, Ooh, so we know yeah. we do know 34 people 34 lost their USBs. USBs yeah. Lost for Missy. Lauren had 18. Now she has 37. Wow, so she doubled. Yep. Dean had 15. Now he has 13. It's <laughs> mighty hard to give up that 24 point. Yeah. Elaine had 13. Now she is in second place with 49. Wow. Okay. And we're, like we had said, we're part of that number. Yep. Aaron had nine, and now he has 14, or oh, had 14. Had, yep. There's another 14 USBs gone. Nora had five, now 11. Dan had four. Holy smokes, you're telling me Nora doubled? She more than doubled. <laughs> Dan wow. had four, now he has two. Okay. Janet had three, now she has 35. Woohoo! And Go Karishma Janet. had two. Now she has three. So she gained one. Somebody saw she something did. that we didn't. Well, she's in the game as possible. Yep. So. Deal. All right. So we'll have that for you on Saturday. We'll get the specifics for where things stand in JSFL. And we're looking forward to hearing what you thought about this episode. Like we said at the top, the game rolls on. And so we're rolling with it. That's the choice that we made here. And we're interested to see what you thought about the events here in week nine and what you think that means for the game going forward. Who you think's doing the best now? What did you make of this double elimination? Is there is there a chance for old Lyro or are they are they gone now with the two powerhouses, Missy and Aaron being voted out? You think there's any path for Elizabeth to recover? Looking forward to hearing all that and more. Voicemail line 206-350-1547. There's a toll-free option, 844-643-8737. Email Show at gmail.com. So whether you call in or record your own or write it up and send it, try to keep it in that three-minute range. Really appreciate that. And I really appreciate it, especially last week when we had 36, given all the, the events that were going on that... There was a lot of people who got it in early, and that was that Yay. really, really helped me <laughs> tackle on all those audios. Mm -hmm. So I, I just wanted to say a special appreciation for folks that did that. Well, I will say I was happy with the vote outs, even though this is a two-point week for me. <laughs> I had both Aaron and Missy safe and was cheering the vote on anyway. As you... Uh, participate in gsfl it gives you a different lens for viewing the yes, game it does. for sure i like to see the shake up in the game because i didn't really want to just see one side or the other so i thought that was awesome that they put them in the two tribes and and for this special you know what i really liked off. what there was no island of the idols messing with people's games after the fiasco that we went through last you know time what? i never even thought about it <laughs> <laughs> didn't occur to me that yes. it wasn't there uh, hey more of that more of that would be just fine <laughs> though i did like their comments in their little hidey hole yeah sure let them <laughs> let them sit up there and do that part let's just not mess up people's games with this goofy twist anymore that's that would be my vote i hope it comes to an end here shortly all righty anything else no have a good one good night everybody <laughs> <laughs>